We're going to take a few minutes now to watch Terry Nance, author of God's Armor Bearer, Volume 3. This is a great book in the series that encourages men and women who have the calling and ministry to serve another. Of course, we're all called to be servants, so no matter where you are in life, God's Armor Bearer, Volume 3, will help you to understand who you are and where you are best suited to serve the Lord as well as the body of Christ. Here's Terry Nance. And the Bible says over in 1 Corinthians 1.10, Paul said, we must all speak the same thing. Let there be no division among you. Now, there's no way in the universal body of Christ we're going to agree doctrinally, but in the local church, you've got to have the heart of that leader and you've got to have the heart and the vision of that church. Amen. What you're communicating in the classrooms is leadership better be. It's the same thing when, when, when Moses laid hands on those elders. Those elders were to represent him to the people. Amen. Now, so what God helped me with with Pastor Caldwell is this right here. There were times when pastor would, would shut it and say, Terry, I feel like we need to wait. Now, the way the Lord helped me with this was that if his goal was to reach people for Jesus and my goal was to reach people for Jesus, then what difference does it make whose methods are used as long as the goal's being reached? Amen? Amen. So you're going to have to have a respect for your leader and acceptance and a tolerance of your leader's personality and way of doing things. Page number 13, point number three must instinctively understand your leader's thoughts. Philippians 2.20, Paul, Paul said this about Timothy. He is like-minded. I have no one as like-minded as Timothy. Point number one here, take time to pray together. Now, pastors and leaders are going to have to take time to pray together, of course, with their leadership and, and, and also uh, with the church body, but mostly with the leadership. And there is a principle which is called the 80-20 principle. The 80-20 principle is this right here. A pastor will spend 80% of his time with 20% of the people and 20% of his time with 80% of the people. And you may say, why is that? Because a pastor and a leader has to develop that leadership core around him. Has to. You've got to put yourself in those around you because those are the ones who's going to represent you out into that body. And I know one day someone come to me and they said, you know, I really have a problem with Agape Church and I have a problem with the leadership staff. And I said, well, well, what is it? And they said, well, it just appears that you guys are just too cliquish. And when they used that word, I told them, I said, let's, let's just wait just a minute. Jesus had a click. Think about it. Jesus had a click. He had the 70, he had the 12, and then he had the three. Now you stop and think about it. Peter, James, and John, wherever he went, and when he went into a house somewhere, he would say, Peter, James, and John, you come in here, the rest of you stay outside. <laughs> now, have you ever thought, how would you like to have been Thomas, Bartholomew, yeah. Luke, or any of these other ones? You know, you're sitting there going, well, when's he, when's he going to take me? When's it my turn? You ever thought about that? I mean, check it out. When he goes to the Mount of Transfiguration, I mean, here he is. He's got Peter, James, and John. I mean, the glory of God. Moses and Elijah, the Chicana glory and all this. When they came down from that mountain, don't you know they're going, man, check this out, buddy. We, we saw Elijah, we saw Moses, and the rest of the disciples were probably thinking, oh, we're so blessed to hear it. <laughs> we're so glad you had this encounter. Because you know they were like everybody else. Sure they were. And they were probably thinking, well, when's he going to take me? But Jesus, I'm telling you, he did not mess with it. He didn't sit there and line them all up and say, now, here's the way this deal's going to work so everybody's happy. I'll take Peter, James, and John this time. Next time I'll take Bartholomew, uh, Luke, and Thomas, and we'll just go down the line. Is everybody happy? Go ahead and just shoot yourself and put yourself out of the misery because you cannot make people happy. Jesus didn't deal with it. He just said, Peter, James, and John, come with me. And the rest of them said, and we know what, what, what's next. Stay outside. <laughs> but the truth of it is, if you'll quit trying to say, God, when, when can, and why don't they let me in? If you'll just go serve and just be a blessing, you know what will happen? Servanthood is really the key to unlocking your destiny. The armor bearers of today will be the leaders of tomorrow. 
God's Armor Bearers, Volume 3, will help you develop a servant's heart in preparing yourself for all that God has for you. Now you can get God's Armor Bearer, Volume 3, by calling the toll-free number on the screen or get it at the Destiny Image website also on the screen. And as always, Destiny Image books are available at your favorite online book source or at a bookstore near you. God's Armor Bearer, Volume 3. You need to have this book.